Ladies and gentlemen, he last fought his way into belt contention by winning the contender tournament at Glory 31 Amsterdam. Here comes Martel Grunhard. He lost to Holskin by way of a decision in 2010. They rematched at Glory 26 in December with Holskin earning another decision victory. Mertel Grunhardt, the Predator, gets another shot at his arch enemy here tonight in Denver. And he has a lot of great momentum coming into this fight. He's coming off of a tournament contender uh, championship at Glory 31 Amsterdam. He showed a good TKO win over Kareem Ben Mansour, and he used his knees and his dangerous right hand early in that fight. But what gave him a lot of confidence coming into this fight is his dominant performance over Johan Congolo. And, you know, he did more damage to Congolo than Nicky did, so this is giving him a little bit more confidence going into this fight. Brunhart six and five in glory. We spoke about it at the beginning of the broadcast. Has been extremely inconsistent throughout his career. You know, many thought that he beat Holskin and should have been awarded the title in that fight in December. He didn't get it. You would think maybe a rematch, but he he goes and he, he, he fights another bout and loses. So then he has nothing's easy with Grunard. Then he has to go back into a welterweight contender tournament to get this shot at Holskin tonight. Yeah, he's very motivated. Him and uh, Mike's gym are very motivated for big fights, and this is as big as it gets. And in that last fight, it was really about the, the volume striking of Grunard versus the power shots of Nicky. And Grunard did a good job at moving on the outside, using his jab and angles, and landing a lot more than Nicky did, but Nicky did a, a good job at using his counter kicks and ended up doing more damage in the later rounds, but again, very close decision uh, win for Holskin. You mentioned Big Mike, Mike Panacea from Mike's gym. Him and Grunhardt have been together since he was a teenager. Big Mike's like a father figure to Grunhardt. If he was to win the title here tonight in Colorado, it would be a true storybook ending. His amazing undefeated run in glory is on the line tonight. Fighting in the U.S. for the first time in more than a year. Here is Nikki Holskin. never tasted defeat inside the glory ring. 32-year-old welterweight champion Nikki Holston looking for his 12th win in a row. Yeah, Nikki is a very calm, relaxed fighter, a very good boxer, and very good counter fighter. That's what makes him very dangerous. He stays very calm and relaxed. And, uh, he's a really good championship fighter in five rounds. He's, he likes to stay really relaxed in the first few rounds. And usually by round four and five, he's picking up the pace. I think that was an issue in the last fight with Grunard is he waited a little too long and wasn't being active enough, so I have a feeling he's going to be a little bit more active this fight. Well, Holskin said the issue with the last fight was his reality show took too much time and he was very distracted. He said he is much more focused this time around. However, the reality show TV cameras were still following him. Yeah, they were still following him, but he's had two tough title defenses. Uh, again, he had that very close decision at Glory 26 against Myrtle, and his last fight was at Glory 29, Copenhagen against Congolo. Again, very close decision. So I think for him to really dominate the division, he's a, a really dominant performance tonight.
Here's the tail of the tape for the welterweight world title fight between Grunhardt and Holskin. Grunhardt is two years younger than the champion Holskin and has a one inch height and two inch reach advantage. Grunhardt really needs to use that height and reach advantage to keep the fight on the outside. And, um, that's where he found most success. And looking at the knockdown ratio, Nicky is very dangerous. And his counter punching scores up a lot of knockdowns. And, He's a strikes per minute, he lands very accurate, and that's what's very strong and very good about Nicky Holtz. Here are our glory championship rules. Five three-minute rounds, no elbow strikes, takedowns or submission attempts are allowed. Fighters can only clinch if they immediately attack. Three knockdowns in a round or four, and the fight will result in a TKO. Doctor or the referee can end the fight. The scoring system is based on three judges using the 10-point plus system, and this system is really made to, for fighters to really go out there and, and go for the knockdown. So the first criteria is knockdowns, followed by damage inflicted, clean scoring techniques, and finally, degree of aggressiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening. Five rounds for the Glory Welterweight Championship of the World. Two Dutch warriors whose paths cross for the third time. Their first was an extra round affair. The second, a controversial split decision. Tonight, neither man wants to go to the scorecards. This bout sanctioned by the Colorado State Boxing Commission. At the opening bell, your referee is Oscar Martinez. From Denver's Mile High to China's Shanghai, it's time for glory! Let's meet the challenger. Fighting out of the black corner, he is a European WBC and World Max champion. His professional record, 63 wins, 21 losses, three bouts scored even, 36 big knockouts. At six feet, one inch tall, 1.85 meters, he weighed in at 168 and one half pounds, 76.4 kilos. Fighting tonight out of the Netherlands, ladies and gentlemen, here is Martel, the Predator, Grunhaar. His opponent standing on my left is a three-time Dutch, three-time world champion who brings with him a perfect 11-0 glory record. His professional career, 89 wins with 11 losses, 46 of those wins by knockout. He stands six feet even, 1.83 meters, and he weighed in at 169 and one half pounds, 76.9 kilos. Fighting tonight out of the Netherlands, he is the reigning and defending undisputed glory welterweight champion of the world, Nikki the Natural Holskin. Here again is your referee, Oscar Martinez. Come on over. Come on over, fighter. We've been over the rules. I want a clean, fair fight. Obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Any questions? Touch them up, gentlemen. Back to your corner. Judge, back to your corner. Judge, fight! The Glory Welterweight Championship is on the line. Nikki Hoskins, the champion in the white gloves, and the challenger, Myrtle Grunhardt, in the black. And both fighters come out firing. And both guys said they had a different strategy and different style for this time around. It could be Nikki throwing more output, or Myrtle kind of staying in the pocket a little bit more and exchanging, so we'll see. Grunhardt said he was confident he will knock Holtzkin out this time. He's not going to be as technical as he was in Amsterdam. He's going to hunt him down because he doesn't feel Holtzkin can handle that type of pressure. Holtzkin's really good when he when you're a standing target, so I think Myrtle needs to move a little bit. Kind of use that jab on the outside, and he did a good job at using his angles in the last fight. Well, we can't deliver from Holtzkin. And Grunhardt. 
that returns the favor. Nick Holmskin said he is trained with the oxygen mask on and all on just to get ready for this title fight here in Colorado. He was also spending some time at Dwayne Ludwig's gym. Myrtle's doing a good job at keeping the jab active. But he's not really threatening too much. Locked from Brunard. High kick gets her from Holskin. Nicky has really good kicks, and he just hasn't really showcased him too much in his last fights. But he's got a good low kick, good left kick. Mixes his kicks really well. You would know you've spent some time in the glory ring with Nicky Holskin. He has really ruled this welterweight division for quite some time. A straight wins. And he has come out firing, landing 14 of 22 total strikes. Both guys are still being a little cautious, though. But Nicky in the last fight did a good job turning southpaw and landing that kick from a southpaw position. And he's mixing it in quite frequently already in this first round. And combined 187 pro kickboxing bouts between these two. Both have 11 fights in glory, but Holskin's 11 0, Grunhart 6 and 5. And in the last fight, it was that inside low kick of Nicky that did damage, and he's going back to it. That's a stinging uppercut from Grunhart. Back. That's what he needs to do. Throw those uppercuts on ankles. Use those jabs. Spinning back fist from Holmskin. Blocked by Grunhart. There's that inside low kick that he's finding a lot of success with early. Those will add up. Time! Nice shot through, but it was Holskin who was much more active in that first round as we checked out the highlights. Yeah, there were some good exchanges, and Nicky was doing a good job at using his kicks, and Myrtle was doing a good job at using his jab. But Nicky keeps mixing up that orthodox and that southpaw, mixing levels with his kicks, and he's doing a lot of damage with that inside low kick. That was that nice rear uppercut by Myrtle, and Myrtle's attacking on angles, and when he's throwing combinations and punches, he needs to kind of take that angle and try to slip his punches between the defense of Holzman. It's good with the coach Fout Krach. That's what I know now, okay? What's that? I said what you just said, it was good with the coach Krach. Let's go! But you must have to Let's get that ice, coach! Big Mike giving final instructions to Myrtle Grunard. Time! Seconds out! Time. I need to clean up the sights. Back up. Referee Oscar Sorry. Martinez has called timeout. There's ice and water in the corner of Holskin. And the bell rang, and uh, Big Mike wasn't even Mike. out of the ring yet. Round number two, ready to go. Welterweight title on the line. Ron Crook and Joseph Baltolini here. Ringside at Glory 34, Denver. It's interesting to see how Myrtle's gonna adjust to, to eating those inside low kicks. Nikki's mixing off that right hand off that inside low kick. But Myrtle, to avoid that, in my opinion, needs to, to jab and move. He needs to keep jabbing and moving. That leg staying stationary, and Holton's gonna take that leg all day. Right on cue, he landed another low kick. I think Myrtle needs to be a little bit more active now. Get Nikki to shell up and mix in his angles. Oh, Shots on the leg side. It's all Holtzkin hitting 15 of 16 throw. Myrtle's being a little bit more active with his punches, but Nikki's landing a lot of low kicks. He's, he, he's landed 27 of 33 low kicks already in a round and a half. Incredible action. I like what Myrtle's mixing in those hooks off of those straight punches. But I'd like to see him mixing his kicks as well. Keep mixing those angles. Can't be that standing target. That was a spectacular technique from Holstein. Did he land? 
Cerebral to look good. And I think he's showing a different style here. He's being a little bit more active. He's moving a little bit more. In the first fight, he was staying in the pocket a little bit more, using his high shield, and Berto was letting him... Uh, Berto was using the angles because Nicky wasn't moving. Now he's controlling his distance a lot better. Pulse gets the number one right. welterweight in Green total right. strikes landed Fight. with 561 total punches landed and 374 total kicks landed 187. That's incredible. High output fighter. And he just mixed in a nice right knee, and that's Myrtle's uh, big weapon that he's scored a lot of big knockouts for. He's a fighter that likes to fight on the outside and slip in knees up the middle, and he's got to keep throwing those knees, Myrtle. And Nicky's still staying in the pocket. Not really feeling a threat by Myrtle's attack. Oh, that inside leg kick is really doing that damage. Myrtle's not having an answer for it. Southpaw now, put that lead leg behind him and make it harder for Nicky to find success landing on him. Runehardt with an extra shot there after the bell. Fighters go back to their corners. Very tight fight so far. Joseph, how do you have it scored? Well, I have to get the first two rounds to, to hold skin. Those inside low kicks are doing the most damage, and uh, those are adding up, and according to the glory scoring, that cumulative damage is happening with those low kicks. And let's see some of Nicky Holskin's handiwork. Yeah, he's mixing a lot of spin attacks, and there he threw his spinning hook kick, and Myrtle's finding a lot of success when he's kicking on the outside too, but Nicky just keeps landing that inside low kick, and it makes it really hard for Myrtle to put combinations together that every time he throws, he's eating inside low kicks. You need to plant your front leg to throw something, but when you have a low kick swiping your leg out, it really shuts down your output. Let's go, seconds out! Back to Wait. So, Gail, the, once again, the bell sounds and seconds are taking their time to get out. And Grunhardt slips a jab through the defense of Holskin to start this third round. Yeah, this is now he's trying to stay on the outside a little bit more, but he's backing himself into the corner. And that's the worst place you want to be with Holskin is being that stationary target. Grunhardt goes on the attack, another uppercut lands. Right. That's what Myrtle needs to do. If, right. if he's going to eat an inside low kick, he's got to throw a combination. Otherwise, it's just going to keep eating them away. Grunhardt said he was not going to be as technical in this fight. He was really hoping to attack Holskin, and Grunhardt goes over the ropes. Now he's known for his flying knees, and that was a good opportunity to throw one. Just under two to go in round three. Nicky's back to controlling the center of the ring, closing distance down, and he's keeping his head guard very tight and mixing in those low kicks. Holskin's such a good counter hunter. Puncher, excuse me. He'll just sit in the pocket. Deliver those shots. Myrtle needs to attack more. He can't just stand there. He really needs to put some combinations together. Earlier in the round, he put together some punches like he's doing now. That's what he needs to do. Keep mixing in that uppercut. He's finding success with that, that right uppercut. Holskin goes down to the canvas. Just a slip. He slipped under that shot from Grunhardt. He got up really slowly. I don't know if he yeah. maybe rolled an ankle in the process. Wearing the ankle brace on the right leg and just over the ankle. Under one to go. Round three scheduled for five. Body shot from Holskin. And that's what he's known for. He's got a good left hook to deliver. He's had a lot of good finishes finding that left hook. Oh. 
success early on with his kicks, and now he might be letting the hands go a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Something seems to that slip. He kind of changed a little bit. He's not throwing as much power shots. He's, he's lightening up on his punches. But I'd like to see Grunard use his kicks on the outside a little bit more. And that's a good range for him to mix in his kicks, step into his punches. And Holskin fires one more shot just before the bell. Good, solid right hand by Holskin. Great. Time. Well, the pace definitely slowed down there in that third round. Grunhardt came out firing early. Yeah, he, that, that's when he's having his most success, is when he keeps coming forward and throwing combinations. He found a lot of success mixing up the uppercuts. But he can't just keep being a single tar uh, a standing target. If, if he's standing there and only throwing singles, he's not doing well. But when he's coming forward like he just did and mixing and in his over. punches and throwing those big knees over. This is where Holtz can slip under that punch, but you can see it was a little slow of him getting up. Not yeah. sure what would have happened there. Seconds out! Seconds out! His face covered with Vaseline. Let's see if our referee wipes that off. Hey! And he does it. Championship rounds underway. The Glory Welterweight title on the line. The champion, Nikki Holskin in the white gloves, and the challenger, Mertel Grunhardt, in the black. So far, I have this score fight three rounds to zero for Nikki. It's all from those clean, effective scoring strikes and the cumulative damage with those inside low kicks. Oh! Holskin slips down once again and just avoids the huge hook from Grunhardt. Yeah, Grunhardt's finding like two, three times in a round to throw an explosive combination. But in between those explosive combinations, he's just not doing enough. Leg kicks. Domination from Holskin landed 39 out of 44. That's how it's going to be. Hey! Hey! Oscar Martinez calls timeout. He's definitely with the ball backer. He's acting up. Head while you were going down. You okay? Can you continue? Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Later. Watch those knees going down. Hey! Grinhart Warren for throwing knees. Holskin was going down. And it's really tough to control it when you're in mid combination. Needs to watch out for that. But every time Nicky's falling, he doesn't get up with uh, urgency. It's, it's very slow, so you could see some damage happening in his ankle or who knows. Grunhardt's got to pick up the pace here. Fourth round. Like I said, he, he keeps throwing explosive blasts of combinations two, three times in the round, but in between, it's just Nikki picking away on those low kicks. Very intelligent fighter, Nikki Holtz. Clean break, clean break, gentlemen. But Nikki's starting to box a little bit more. This is what Greenheart needs. Keep active with his boxing, keep taking his angles. There. Don't see any cut though in the headbutt. Great. Under one to Leave go. It. Round on. four. Break it up. Hey. Nikki has slowed down, but again, I, this is a good round for Myrtle to pick up the the volume and try to steal this Break fourth it. round. Right now, Nikki Holskin pitching a shutout. This was definitely a more competitive round. What's that elbow? Yeah, we're gonna need Myrtle to do something big now, try to score a knockdown and make this fight a little bit closer. I think his knees are a good weapon. If, if, his, if he can pull off one of his switch left knees. Those big uppercuts, he's been finding success with. Here we go, and Holtzkin ends up on the glory canvas again. Just another slip. Four rounds 
in the books. And this fight is looking very similar to the one in 2010 and the one this past December. But I don't know, I found Grunhardt doing really well that round. And this is a round that you can easily get Grunhardt, who's a little bit more active and push, push Nicky a little bit more. And Nicky keeps falling down. He seems to not have a base under him. Are you giving that round to Grunhardt? I'm going to give that one to Grunhardt, so three to one. He's finding success when he's throwing his combinations and punches. The single shots aren't working. But when Grunhardt's staying in the pocket and throwing multiple punches and combinations, that's where he's finding his most, most of his success. Yeah. Mike like did his famous sponge Look splash to try to wake Grunhardt up. The famous Nikki, sponge bath round. in between rounds from Big Mike. Seconds out, let's go. Back to your opponent. Last round, you want to touch him up? Touch him up. Ready? Last round, guys. These two bitter rivals do touch gloves for this fifth and final round. Nikki Holskin, the champion, and Myrtle Grunhardt, the challenger. Grunhardt needs to do something spectacular here in the fifth. Uh, this is when he's using his boxing and his angles, which he should have done a little bit earlier on in the fight. But Nicky has slowed down his low kicks. Holskin landed 80 total strikes, 60 of them being kicks. Grunhardt hitting 67, and he's been active with the punches, drawing 47. Yeah, and he started mixing in that knee a little bit more. And I think that's, if he's going to put Nicky down in this fifth and final round, it's going to be from one of those big knees from the outside that he's good with. Body shot from Grunhardt, pushing Holtzman back. He slips and delivers a right. Yeah, this is the fight Grunhardt wants. When Nicky shells up like that, that's the fight that Grunhardt wants. Take your angles. Nikki has slowed down here. This is Berto's chance. Grunhardt might have an opportunity here as we are halfway through round number five. He slipped a good knee on the inside, but I like when he throws his uppercuts on the inside. Holskin goes back to his bread and butter. A kick to the lead leg of Grunhardt. Here comes Grunhardt. And Greenheart stage an epic comeback here in Denver. Uppercut from Nikki Holmskin. Yeah, he set that up with a beautiful inside low kick touch. Rip uppercut. Roberto came back with a big straight right hand. The Glory Welterweight Championship fight between these two bitter rivals, Nikki Holskin and Myrtle Grunhardt, is in the hands of the judges. What action? Yeah, this was definitely a good back and forth fight. And I think what took this fight was Nikki's early dominance with the low kick. And especially in that first and second round, he was doing a lot of damage with that inside low kick, which kind of slowed Myrtle's output down. And but later on in the fight, Myrtle was able to find success when he was putting some combinations together. 
by round four and five, that's when Myrtle started to pick up the pace a lot and started being a little bit more active, landing more power shots. I gave round four to Myrtle. And then round five, it was more Myrtle here putting combinations together, really put on the inside, mixing in hooks and uppercuts. And it was a little, uh, little late for the action. We needed a little bit more of that pace and intensity earlier on in the fight. But overall, a great fight, great performance by both of these guys. I still would like to see another fight. I know they said they're done, but one more win in her. Well, here are the strike stats. As you look at Mertel Grunhart throwing 195 punches and then the kicks, 94 for the champion Nikki Holtzkin, landing 74 of those. Yeah, it was Myrtle Grunhart that was taking more of the punishment on the legs from those low kicks from Nikki. But again, Myrtle was doing a good job at staying in the, in the pocket, throwing his hooks and uppercuts, and especially in those later rounds, uh, really put some good headshots on Nikki Holtz. Ladies and gentlemen, after five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges score about the same, 48-47. A unanimous decision for your winner. And still, glory welterweight champion of the world, Nikki Holskin. Here to present the belt, glory CEO, John Franklin and the Chief Executive Officer of our partner, Liberty Global, Mr. Mike Freeze. A nice sign of respect from both these bitter rivals, Holtzkin and Grunhardt. But it was Nikki Holtzkin who retains the hardware tonight here in Denver. It's 90th career victory for Nikki Holtzkin. Nikki, congratulations not only on tonight's victory, but somehow beating this man three times. You've had over 100 professional fights. Where does Myrtle rank as far as your opponents are concerned? Myrtle is ranked at the top level. He is a top fighter. I have so much respect for him because he's uh, trash talking, backing it up, and now after the three fights, we are friends. So uh, I respect him. He's a good fi very good fighter. What was the game plan? It seemed like you came out, you won the first three rounds with your aggressiveness, seemed to get a little tired perhaps. Myrtle won the last two. Yeah, of course, he won the last two. He hit me a couple of times, good with the uh, f***ing knee. Sorry for the language. But uh, he's a very good fighter. The first few rounds, I think it was in my, uh, my uh, way uh, with the points. I do a lot of low kicks, inside kicks, outside kicks. Keep it in the distance. And, uh, but he, you can see he's a warrior. The last two rounds, he always come back. So he's a very uh, difficult fighter to fight with. And I have uh, much respect for him. And Myrtle, tonight obviously didn't go your way. In your opinion, what went wrong for you? Uh, you know, he got me a little bit, a bit with the low kicks the first two rounds. And uh, the air in Denver is a little bit tough for me. <laughs> but uh, also for Nikki. But we, I did good. I came back, you know. I came back strong. I'm a, I'm a diesel, so, you know, four or five rounds I did good. But, hey. The best fighter here, welterweight. We both are on a, on a top level, you know, in this division. And, uh, you know, you, Nicky is a great guy, and, but you won't see uh, the last of me. I'm going to fight and fight. I'm going to let the audience enjoy my fights, you know. So, <clears throat> thank you, Nicky, for the fights. Thank you for all three fights. And, uh, you know, sorry about the trash talking, but that's me. <laughs> we're going to drink a beer now. We're going to drink a beer now. They say they'll never fight again. The trilogy is over. And still, the champion of the world, Nikki Holskin.
Nikki Holskin improves to 3 and 0 against Myrtle Grunhart, but more importantly, successfully defends his Glory Welterweight title for a third straight time. He earned his first win in this promotion all the way back at Glory 2. That was in 2012. Yeah, he's had a good run in the welterweight division, and uh, he's very tough to beat. And there's not many other top welterweights that I think could really push him at this time. So it's a good opportunity for welterweights to step up, start training hard, and challenge Nikki for that belt.